Yay! Hi, I'm Clay Carlino, and I am not a vampire! But I do need blood. I need lots of blood. It's Halloween time, and that means that I need fake blood. Now you can easily get bottles of fake blood at the Halloween store for about seven or eight bucks. That seems like an awful lot for fake blood, especially since I can get real blood cheaper than that. All I need is an axe! Oh, um, uh, I've done some research. There's a ton of recipes for fake blood online, and a lot of them use corn syrup. I'm sure that corn syrup works really well to give you good-looking fake blood, but it's also sticky, and it's made of sugar, which means that if you don't clean it up, you're going to be drawing bugs. It's, it's just a little bit of a mess. So I'm looking for a recipe for fake blood that doesn't rely on sugary syrup and also still looks like blood. Thank you, Wesley. Wesley wants to be a TV star. He's, he's trying to interrupt the shot, aren't you, Wesley? Yeah. So in addition to corn syrup, a lot of the recipes that I've found call for using all-purpose flour as a base. I've gotten kind of iffy results with that. So I'm going to show you a recipe that I think works a lot better. I'm going to start with four cups of water. Now, I'm just going to wait for this to start boiling. I'm going to add a third of a cup of cornstarch. I'm not just going to dump this all in. If I did that, then it would all clump up. I'm going to put it in very slowly, and I'm going to whisk it vigorously the whole time. Now, I don't have a plastic whisk here, and this is a coated pan, so I don't want to scratch it. So instead, I've got a whole bunch of these wooden skewers, and I'm going to use those like a whisk. Cornstarch really likes to clump up. You want to try and get as much of those clumps to break down as you can, so that your blood will be smoother and more realistic looking. I've been stirring for about three minutes, and as you can see, the blood is already starting to thicken up. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. You'll also notice that there's still plenty of clumps in there. We will work most of those out. Notice how this is a nice low boil. That's what we want. Keep your eye on the heat. If it starts to boil too aggressively, then turn the heat down a bit. At this point, it's been boiling for about five minutes. You can see we've got a really nice texture here, and a lot of those clumps are starting to dissolve. We're now ready to start adding color. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put this in here. It looks a lot like the color of candy. So I'm going to add some more red, and then I'm going to show you the next step. So here we go, just a little bit more red. There we go. So now we've got a nice strong red, but it's still way too bright and candy looking. I'm going to add some blue. Put in one drop. One drop. That's it. And even that could be too much. There we go. Look at how dynamic that is. That one single drop of blue food coloring. All right, since that blue was pretty powerful, I'm going to add... Ooh! Okay, well, I guess I'm adding a lot of red. At this point, the color is pretty good, but it still looks a little bit too much like candy. So, I'm going to take a little bit of instant coffee. I got this at the dollar store for a buck. Uh, that's probably about a tablespoon. Uh, really, at this point, you're using your artistic eye how much you want to darken it. The more you add, the more it's going to look like old, rancid blood rather than freshly squirting from the veins. I have seen recipes that use cocoa powder for the same effect, but I've found that that ends up making it look a little bit milky. Now that is beautiful. I've turned off the heat. Take a look at how thick that is. Now, I'll actually be able to thin this down with some water, because it's going to continue to thicken as it cools. But when you're thinning down, 
Be very, very careful not to add too much water. Add it in small amounts because it takes a small amount of water to go from being too thick to way too thin. Look at that. Oh, isn't that awful? I'm scraping the pan because uh, I want to make sure to get all this really thick stuff. Isn't it beautiful? Here's one that I did earlier, and you can see that it is thickened up also. So let's just see how much water you can add to this to make it a good bloody consistency. Okay, I'll add a little bit of water. It's still a little bit thick. All right, there we go. That is pretty much the consistency that I want. Each of these jars of fake blood took me about 15 minutes to make, and I have enough ingredients to probably make a couple gallons. The ingredients cost about as much as one bottle of fake blood at the Halloween store. So if you plan to have a particularly gory Halloween, this is definitely the more economical way to go, and it really doesn't take that long, and it's pretty easy. So there you have it. Knowing that you do not have to be afraid to make your own fake blood instead of buying it from the man at the Halloween store. This is Clay Carlino telling you to be brave. Yay! Ugh.